this is my dad's bike. I finally got it finished. I did a couple of earlier videos of the project leading up to this. Uh, this bike was in really rough shape when he had first picked it up. This is a pre-war Ward's Hawthorne. Um, I didn't. I had done some modifications to this frame. Like I say, it was in very rough shape when I first started the project. Uh, if you check with my first video on it, kind of get caught up on where it was actually at. Uh, the seat mast is is kind of the turning point of this bike. Um, at one point in time, you know, it it either got hit by a car or something to that effect. It got have pretty heavily slammed by something. And uh, <clears throat> as a result, there's a dent in the seat mast which actually lightly bent the seat mast. Um, it's a lot easier to see in person when you're putting it under close scrutiny, but it is something that can be easily unnoticed if you're not directly looking for it. But because that seat mast was damaged, I felt that it was okay to go ahead and do some of the modifications to the frame that I wanted to see done. Uh, now these aren't modifications I would recommend doing to just any frame just because, but like I say, because this this frame had some serious damage, it was kind of at a turning point that it's like, okay, it's justifiable. <clears throat> I don't recommend people go ahead and start doing some of the mods I've done just for the sake of doing them though. I'd like to be clear on that. I guess, you know, it's your bike, do what you want with it, but you know, when it comes to pre-war metal, it's pretty rare, so. But what I had done is shaved the top of the mast off here, welded on a, a clamp here, put a slot in there on the back side, a pinch slot, and uh, the fender arch was, was completely crushed, so that was cut out and replaced with this fender arch which also has a, a mounting position for a brake so because of the rear frame spacing one could easily convert this to a to a three speed if they wanted to because now you have the brake mount there that you never had before and the rear spacing is correct to be able to put in a Sturmy three speed in there so that's that's kind of a neat gateway opener that you know without the brake mounted you know, you'd be stuck with a three-speed coaster would be your only option. Um, this frame actually had had three cracks in it. Uh, the one I had pointed out here before, uh, as you can see, I did a repair on all that. I've been welding a long time. But there was actually two that went unnoticed in a previous video right here on, on each chain stay. Those were a little more difficult to to get in and repair because you know it's a, it's tighter quarters in here than it than it is in this large opening of the front half of the frame. But uh, you'll also notice that I welded on a chain guard tab, and I welded on a, a brake uh, armature tab. And I did this because I get sick of those loops. You know, you put that loop on there, and hey, that's great the first time you set up the bike. But then later down the road, you go ahead to change a flat or something, and you know, you end up having the wheel in a slightly different position. And what do you got? A scratched up chain stay from that loop. So I, I, I welded that tab on there, and then I cut a short linkage rod, and that, that's pretty much it. I welded the nuts to the back side of that linkage rod, so that way I can just only need the screwdriver not have to hold the wrench or nothing you see the back side of there um, you'll also notice that I welded on these uh, fender tabs here they kind of create a little bit of a finned effect and uh, I wanted to go a little larger but because of the the length of the the fender arch that was about as large as I could go without having to alter a fender arch um, I, I like those fins in that they add a little bit of balance to the frontward finning of this fork. The fork turned out pretty good. It, it's traveling very well. Um, it was a, it was quite a difficult thing to get back on track. There's there's actually guide slides that would originally go in those slots that didn't come with the fork so I had to look into doing some other options and I, I came up with a pretty good system here that uses uh, some nylon bushing washers to slide as the slide surface. You can see the large nylon washer, the white disc right there um, and that keeps everything 
sliding smooth and those pieces are fully replaceable so when they wear just ditch them pick up a new new nylon washer at the hardware store and slap them on there uh, you'll notice that my bottoms of my fork unbolt and it's, it just makes more sense than trying to spread the fork legs apart like the previous factory design I don't know maybe it actually incorporated a female thread hub to begin with I don't know I don't you know I haven't actually had an opportunity to see one of these forks in a full original condition to really do a comparison I just I just did what I had to do to get it uh, get it rolling kind of did my own thing there uh, I also added this this truss to the fork they did have a truss on the front originally it isn't the correct truss it it it's a Schwinn truss that I extended the the mounting bracket here for and I did it in a hammered finish it's an industrial hammered finish I also did the kickstand in the same finish I like it because you know it's not like the chrome in a can that looks kind of cheesy you know it, it gives it a nice look that I, I'm pretty happy with the results on that and you get dad handed me over some of the parts to get this thing finished uh, well it is his bike he had picked up some bars in the seat love those jumbo cruiser bars on there we got some like rapier brown uh, glitter grips and this simulated leather saddle here nice big crash bar big big chrome coils on it beautiful seat real fitting to the bike it turned out excellent I, I took it for a cruise last night nice and quiet and smooth lots of hours into this one that's my post-war Ward's Hawthorne in the background there that's more or less yard art I've got over 30 bikes someday maybe I'll do something with it and someday maybe I won't I also did these wheels for dad uh, he had picked these are off of a 80s rally cruiser um, I completely disassembled them you know polished them polished them up polished the spokes swapped to this new narrowed front hub um, this is one of the narrowest front hubs I could come across to get the proper span and everything I needed for my fork and everything so I think that that pretty much covers the majority of it. Well, thanks for having a look.